Car companies love to say things like, our car has intoxicating form and compelling function. <laughs> Yuck. But if you're an engineer, you know that's marketing bull poopy. You can smell it when you see it. It's not really saying anything about the car. So what if they said it's got, I don't know, more agile handling with improved steering behavior because of torque vectoring? Is that more hype or high-tech engineering? Well, today we're gonna figure out which torque vectoring systems are the real deal and not just clever marketing. Let's go, dude. Big thanks to Amaze for sponsoring today's video. Winning is great, I do it a lot, but it's not what really matters. Unless it's about getting the chance to win this 2022 Porsche 911 GT3 with taxes and shipping included. Now that kind of winning does matter. So head over to amaze.com slash donut GT3 to enter for your chance to win. Success can be fleeting and you shouldn't live life only for accomplishment. Unless you're Porsche, maker of one of the most successful competition cars of all time, then yeah, you probably should. And this 911 GT3 right here dominated the Nürburgring in under seven minutes, showing that you can improve on a winner. But again, life isn't about winning, guys. Are you even listening to me? There's so much more to it than that. Things like an aerodynamic body, this shark blue swan neck wing, of course, comfy carbon fiber bucket seats and a four liter flat six unleashing 502 horsepower to stampede the competition. Not that it's a competition, because as we know, winning isn't everything, but let's be real. It feels pretty good. You know what else makes you feel good? Knowing that every one of your donations benefits the Dempsey Center, which helps those managing the impact of cancer by providing a variety of diverse, personalized, and high quality services, all at no cost. And that's winning we should all aspire to. So head over to amaze.com slash donut GT3 to enter for your chance to win and help support an incredible cause. Good luck. Torque is the rotational force that turns the wheels on your car. Now, torque vectoring varies the amount of torque being sent to each of the driven wheels. That relies on multiple sensors, computer controls, and clever engineering. But not all torque vectoring is created equal, and even the most sophisticated systems build upon equipment already in your car. So, to understand torque vectoring, we need to start with the diff aka the differential. And we're not talking calculus here. <laughs> oh, calculus joke. <laughs> when your car goes around a corner, the outside wheel covers a greater distance than the inside wheel. If those wheels were locked together, forced to rotate at the same speed, one would slip or skid, losing traction to compensate for the different distances that those wheels are traveling. So to prevent that, your car has a differential in it. That is a mechanical device which allows two input shafts to rotate at different speeds while driven by a single input shaft. So in a rear wheel drive car, the input is the drive shaft and the output is the left and right axles. That differential allows the outside wheel to rotate faster than the inside wheel so it can cover a greater distance and avoid slipping during ordinary driving. Now, most cars use an open differential containing a set of gears that work together to send power to the axles and also ensure that the wheels can rotate at different speeds. At the end of the drive shaft is a pinion gear that drives a ring gear. And that ring gear is attached to a case or carrier holding one or more spider gears. Ooh, spooky. As the carrier rotates, the spider gears drive two side gears attached to the axles. When both axles turn at the same speed, that spider gears, they're not rotating, but they're mounted on bearings so that they can rotate if there's a difference in speed between the axles. By rotating, the spider gears compensate for that difference. Even if you hold one axle in place, the other side can still turn because of those spider gears. That's great for making tight turns, but here's the thing, there's an issue with it. Open diffs have problems when there's a large difference in grip between the driven wheels. That's because the same rotational force doesn't always produce the same rotational speed. Oh. The common unit of rotational force or torque is the pound foot. Now one pound foot is equal to one pound of force applied one foot from the axis of rotation. And we mess this up a lot. A lot of times we say foot pounds, they're technically different don't get mad at me. It's just the people who, who invented this system, okay? Yell at them, not at me. And to make matters worse, tool companies actually use foot pounds on their like, I don't know, torque wrenches. Speaking of tool shows, click this right here. Freaking me and Job did a show together. It's called Tool Party. It's a lot of fun. 
an object isn't necessarily going to rotate just because torque is applied to it. If you put one pound foot of torque onto a bolt that's been tightened to 100 pound feet, the bolt's not gonna go anywhere. Now how fast an object rotates depends on how much torque is being applied to it and how much resistance that torque has to overcome. So in the case of a car's wheel, some resistance comes from its mass, but most of it comes from the tire's grip and the proportion of the weight of the car over that wheel. So the problem with an open differential is that even though the rotational speed at each wheel can vary, the torque is shared equally. And the maximum torque that each wheel can receive, it's limited to the amount that will break traction for the wheel with the least resistance. That is the traction difference problem. And in extremely slippery circumstances, that can leave you stuck. Insert high-low clip here. Okay, so you can see passenger side tire, all sorts of grip. But because the driver side tire doesn't have any grip, all the power's going there and they're not going anywhere. But a more common symptom of the traction difference problem is when a slipping wheel is getting too much torque. That's the one wheel tire fire that open diffs are known for. Insert high low clip again, boom. Yep, that's one tire fire. And in performance driving situations, traction differences occur almost constantly. I got traction difference problems. This girl likes me and this one doesn't. Maybe I should just stop dating girls. <laughs> uh, during cornering, the car experiences body roll or lean as its weight transfers to the outside wheels. That weight shift unloads the inside wheels, reducing their resistance to rotation. If a car is turning and the unloaded inside tire can only take 50 pound feet before it breaks traction, the grippy tire on the other side will only get a maximum of 50 pound feet too. So if you mash the throttle and send more torque than that, the inside tire is just going to break traction and spin. And once your traction is broken and the tire is slipping, that reduces its resistance further. So 50 pound feet is now far more torque than it can use and it just keeps spinning until it slows down enough to regain that lost grip. Now throughout all of this, the outside tire, which has plenty of grip, doesn't get all that torque that it deserves and it needs it. It's like, torque me baby, torque me. And the outside tire that's just ripping and smoking, it's like, it's my torque. <sighs> It's my toy, and I'm just gonna do it forever. It's my toy. So one way to solve that problem is to simply back off the accelerator. But what fun is that? <laughs> Not fun at all. So here is where torque vectoring can help. Unlike an open differential, torque vectoring can vary the amount of torque being sent to each wheel, slowing one that's slipping and making sure there's enough for one that's gripping. Now some of you are saying, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. Limited slip differentials solve the traction difference problem. And that is true. LSDs provide a mechanical solution to the problem of open differentials, but they're not a perfect solution. There are several types of LSDs and we can't cover how all of them work. We'd probably need an entire B2B for that. If you want it, put a comment down below. But knowing how a clutch pack LSD works is gonna be helpful in understanding how a torque vectoring system works that we're gonna see later. Now, clutch pack LSDs use alternating friction discs in steel plates like the clutch in a motorcycle. The friction discs rotate with the side gears and axles while the steel plates rotate with the ring gear in differential case. And under normal conditions, that clutch pack is disengaged. All those plates just spin past each other and the LSD operates like a normal diff, transferring power from the ring gear to the spider gears to the side gears to the axles. But if the driver presses the accelerator while the wheels are slipping, drag causes the pin holding the spider gears to shift backwards relative to the rest of the differential. And that movement pushes two spring plates outward, engaging the clutch packs. When the clutch plates are pressed together, the rotation of the differential case is sent directly to the wheels, bypassing the spider gears. So this locks the wheels together, forcing them to rotate at the same speed. And this limits how much a wheel that's lost traction can slip. It can only rotate as fast as the other wheel, the one that has grip. But clutch pack LSDs and every other type of LSDs, they have a few drawbacks, mainly just having a great time. <laughs> but for one thing, they require maintenance. Yeah. They're also complex and can be expensive. And because they're solely mechanical, they're a bit dumb. They can only react to what's already happening. Torque vectoring, on the other hand, it's like an LSD that can see into the future. Like me on LSD. And even though torque vectoring requires a differential to function, it can work with any type of diff, open or LSD. Doing that requires a sophisticated, but very small piece of equipment that's probably already on your car, a yaw rate sensor. Heck yeah, y'all, let's get going. 
this is my kind of sensor. If you don't know what yaw is, yaw is the rotation of the car around its center axis while turning. Yaw rate is how quickly that rotation happens. Now you might hear someone say a car feels slow to turn in or quick to rotate. And what they're feeling is changes in yaw rate. Y'all, I wanna do so many y'all jokes, but I can't. Automotive journalists freaking love to talk like this. They salivate at the thought of having to use that word, but they never seem to measure y'all. Engineers do though, using a microscopic, electrically conductive gyroscope or gyroscope, depending on where you live in the world. That's nothing like the gyroscope you've seen with spinning concentric discs or circles, but the principle is still the same. Gyroscopes can be used to measure the inertia produced by rotation. From that, a computer can calculate the rate of yaw, which makes electronic stability control possible, and the same process lies at the heart of torque vectoring. Electronic stability control, or ESC, uses sensors in the car's ECU to prevent loss of traction that can lead to accidents. So for example, if the ECU detects a large steering angle but a low yaw rate, that means that the vehicle isn't turning as much as the driver is telling it to turn. It's understeering and the car could be headed towards an obstacle instead of turning to avoid it. So the ECU will apply braking force to the inside wheels, slowing them and increasing rotation. The simplest forms of torque vectoring use that same system to overcome the disadvantage of an open differential. Now the most basic form of torque vectoring is brake-based systems, and they work because the limitation of open differentials isn't based on the traction at the tire. It's based on the resistance, or lack thereof, at the axle. Basic torque vectoring applies the brakes to add resistance to the axle of a wheel that's slipping. This slows the wheel so it can make use of that torque it's given. And increasing resistance at a slipping inside wheel also increases the total torque that can go to the other wheel. So it's win-win. And this type of torque vectoring can often figure out what to do simply by comparing differences in wheel speed sensors. But that's got the same problem as an LSD. It's purely reactive. So by incorporating other sensors, like a steering angle, for example, torque vectoring systems like the one used at Porsche can apply braking to the inside wheel as soon as a turn begins. That encourages rotation at corner entry and prevents the inside wheel from slipping at all. Porsche system also includes a mechanical limited slip differential, so it doesn't have to rely on the brakes too much. Freaking Porsche, dude. German engineering at its finest. Systems which don't have an LSD can sometimes rely on the brakes too much, causing brake fade when driven at the limit. You know we like doing that. But for drivers who don't take their cars to the track, a solely brake-based torque vectoring system can make a huge difference in how the car drives. It's less prone to understeer and with a sharper turn in response. And another cool thing, they're like stupid cheap to manufacture because there's no new equipment needed to make them work. You just need the right program in your already established ECU. Car and driver even referred to these systems as dollar store torque vectoring. I would have said 99 cent store torque vectoring, but. I'm not a journalist. But that really wasn't a compliment. Car and driver and many enthusiasts think that brake-based systems aren't real torque vectoring, and some of them do sound like marketing hype. Ford described one of their systems as applying brake torque to the wheels. Now, braking force can be described as torque, but it's the torque that's driving the wheels that most of us are interested in. And since braking doesn't directly increase the torque being sent to a wheel like an LSD can, these systems can come off as just performance versions of stability control. Tricky, tricky. Little Ricky. Unlike Ford, manufacturers like Porsche have shied away from the term torque vectoring for solely brake-based systems, instead referring to a functionally identical system as an automatic braking differential. So if you want real torque vectoring, you may want to talk to Lexus, because in 2014, they debuted the RCF with a new torque vectoring differential that uses clutch packs like an LSD, but the clutches are electronically controlled. As we saw earlier with an ordinary clutch pack, as we saw, as we saw earlier. Mm. Oh, that beautiful H2. Okay. Now, as we saw earlier with an ordinary clutch pack LSD, high torque at the input shaft during a loss of traction causes a reaction in the diff. Clutch is engaged, locking the wheels together. Lexus's torque vectoring differential is engaged predictively based on vehicle sensors and settings chosen by the driver. So far, that's a bit like the cheaper brake-based systems, but because it's got a set of clutch packs, like a proper mechanical limited slip diff, it can vary the torque side to side, something an open diff cannot do. One electric motor at each axle rotates a cam that locks the clutch plates together. That motor can vary the cam position to adjust the amount of slip in the clutch plates, and that means the system can apply different amounts of locking to each wheel independently. It also works with the brakes to apply negative torque, that's what Ford called brake torque, to the wheels independently to encourage rotation. So what does this all look like going around a curve? 
Well, as the driver turns into a corner entry, the system applies the brakes to both drive wheels, adding resistance to prevent slip. As the steering angle increases heading towards the apex, the braking force is transferred to just the inside wheel, while the clutch pack engages to send more torque to the outside wheel, encouraging rotation. When the driver unwinds the wheel and steps on the throttle to power through the corner exit, the system sends even more torque to the outside wheels and monitors the inside wheels, applying braking if slip is detected. And all that's doing is preventing understeer that could push the car wide or reduce your exit speed. Nothing dollar store about that system. And it's only a $1,250 option. That torque vectoring differential decreases lap time, increases lateral grip, and even reduces the steering angle necessary to get the car to rotate. We only had time to scratch the surface of torque vectoring. We didn't even get time to talk about the most sophisticated systems yet, which are all found in all wheel drive vehicles because those rely on up to three differentials to maintain grip. They also have to vary torque between the front and rear as well as side to side. But look for that in a future episode about the Audi Quattro. And maybe we'll do another episode about how electric cars deal with torque vectoring. Hmm, you into that? Leave a comment down below. Are you tired of seeing so many junk cars? Then buy this shirt and wear it every day so junk car owners know we buy junk cars. Hi, I'm Junk Car Jimmy. I want you to give me a call. Look at this car. Junk! Ooh! Now that's junk. Yeah. Best I can do is 50 bucks. So get it at donutmedia.com today. I'm Junk Car Jimmy, and we'll pay you a lot of money for that junk car. Depending on the year though. Nothing too new, nothing too old. It's gotta be just right. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of B2B. If you liked it, please hit that like button. That helps us out. Hit subscribe if you're not subscribed to the channel. We got a bunch of new shows coming your way. Uh, like I said, uh, Jack Joby and I, were different people. We shot a, a, a pilot called Tool Party. We got a bunch more episodes coming out. If you wanna chat with me personally on the Discord, uh, join our Donut Underground. Uh, I get on there and I uh, yuck it up with all with all people from time to time. And also you get cool perks like stickers and we give away stuff. I give away shirts on there all the time and I sign personal notes. So if you want a personal note from me, join the DU. Follow us here on Instagram at Donut Media. Follow me on Instagram at Jeremiah Burton. And until next week, bye for now.